Hey guys, I'm Sir Tap Tap, and uh, welcome to another incredibly sporadic episode of my sort of podcasty deal. Um, tonight I want to talk about um, E3, actually, you know, a week late, but whatever. Um, but uh, first, I sort of wanted to mention. Um, so yeah, updates have been kind of sporadic. Um, I just haven't really been too much in the recording mood after the whole garage fire thing. Um, but I wanted you guys to know, um, like, just anytime Parker agrees with me, um, like, anytime I get a good comment, like, somebody enjoyed the video, thought it was really funny or whatever, um, that just really brightens my day and I just wanted to thank you guys in general. I don't get as many comments as I used to, but it's still really cool anytime it happens. Um, Anytime it's a good comment, anyway. But more good than bad. Um, go away. Um, aside from that, um, let's go right into E3. I'll just cover the three conferences basically in order. I don't care too much about the third party conferences. Some cool stuff was shown, but uh, the, the main things were, you know, Nintendo, Microsoft, Sony, as usual. Um, Microsoft had a good show. Everyone had a good showing, honestly. Um, Microsoft has pretty much shown, you know, they're back on track and going with games and stuff, though they did this sort of annoying, like, rubbing it in your face, like, especially during the pre-game show, um, they just made this point that, yeah, we're gonna talk about games, we like games, guys, remember the word games, yeah, it's like, they just, it comes off as trying a bit hard, and I mean, I know why they want to reverse that reputation of, you know, sports TV Call of Duty. Uh, well, not so much the Call of Duty part. But, you know, they clearly want to distance themselves from that. I think they kind of went overboard. Like, I think Nintendo has the right idea of just shutting up and showing games, because that's what everyone really wants from basically all three. Did Earthbound always lag this much? Whatever. Um, so, yes, Barker. Um, Microsoft showed some pretty good stuff, um, not too much for me, but, um, I love the look of Sunset Overdrive, that, that was the best part of their show for me. I'm sure for most other people, the, um, Halo 5, um, and the Master Chief Collection were the, you know, the main part of the show, that's... I absolutely loved Halo 1 when it came out for PC, even though it wasn't honestly the best PC port. Um, I got the first three books, and they kind of screwed up how they released Halo 2 on PC, and I just haven't really been too interested in the series since. If they put Master Chief Collection on PC, I'll probably get it. Uh, not too interested in Halo post-Bungie, to be quite honest. I'm looking more forward to Destiny at this point. Um, they also showed Scalebound. Um, it's Platinum Games, so, you know, it'll probably be pretty good, but the CGI trailer isn't really doing much for me. Um, Crackdown looks good. Well, Crackdown's another CGI trailer, but they seem to understand what they got wrong with uh, Crackdown 2. Um, they didn't show it at the show too much, but, I mean, there was an interview about it, and they seem to understand what they got wrong, and they're sort of... It's like a reboot of Crackdown 2, basically. It's after Crackdown 1 in a different universe. So it's like a... It's half reboot, half... Let's just forget Crackdown 2 ever happened. Um, but it's cool they're not abandoning the IP completely. Um, aside from that, they just had some third parties, and um, what was that? From Phantom Dust? It's a, a, a game I honestly hadn't heard of. Um, all in all, they showed some good games. Um, they had a big problem with lots of CGI trailers. That's not Microsoft's problem specifically so much as everyone but Nintendo had tons of CGI trailers. I am not a big fan of that. So, excuse me. Um, See, so yeah, Microsoft, pretty good, not super amazing. Um, I would say it was better than last year, but honestly, their E3 was fine last year. It's just, you know, 
everyone still remembered the whole DRM crap, and then Sony was like, nope, we're not doing that. And that sort of makes you forget everything that they said at their actual conference. Their actual conference at uh, E3 2013 was fine. Um, um, now, on to Sony's. Sony's was the longest, and it kind of showed. Um, they had lots of really cool stuff. I was pretty excited to see Little Big Planet 3 up there. Um, and they're definitely making the right decision by putting um, Sumo Digital on that instead of um, Media Molecule. I'm, I doubt Media Molecule would even be up for making you know endless sequels. But Little Big Planet, in my opinion, is the sort of thing they need at least one of on each platform, you know, on each generation. Um, so I'm glad somebody else is farming that out. Um, the thing with Little Big Planet is the main idea is, you know, the thing you need all the super creativity and everything for. Once they have the idea and the visual stuff, I really think it's fine to just hand it off. Like, uh, Smoot Digital did Little Big Planet Vita, didn't they? I think they did a pretty good job with that. I don't have it personally. But, uh, the new characters for Little Big Planet 3 look fun. And, uh, it seems like they might be focusing a bit more on the gameplay. It was hard to tell. They, it seemed like they were having, like, massive input lag on the demonstration, and, um, you know, that sort of stuff happens. It's actually a strong point of Nintendo's, um, Nintendo did a digital event, they called it. They basically did, showed the same stuff they would in a press conference, except in a pre-recorded digital event. Um, you know, live streamed, but, uh, all pre-done. Um, so I think Sony could have fixed some of that, but um, they showed some really cool stuff. They had Entwined, which is, um, I think it's got the, was it the art director from Journey? Somebody from Journey, some um, some cool people working on it. It looks really good. I got it. It They did the thing where, you know, hey, it's available now, or actually it was available like two hours later than the conference, but you know. Uh, the PlayStation Store never updates exactly on time. Well, never when you think. It's a little... it's never quite standard. Um, but that's really good. I'm glad they announced that, and I'm kind of glad it came out right then, because that, you know, gives a little bit of hype um, that I'm not sure an artsy $10 game otherwise would have gotten. I'm glad they showed it. I love Abzu. That was great. Um, definitely look... wait, was that the Journey one? I forget, honestly. Um, Abzu looks absolutely beautiful, though. I definitely want that. Um, and they also had... Um, this was... <laughs> I liked how they revealed this, too, but... Um, hi, Parker. Yes, hi. They're making um, an HD remake. I'm not sure how HD. Um, but they're remaking Grim Fandango for PS4. Um, and that'll be awesome, because, I mean, you can't easily get Grim Fandango anymore. Um, like, uh, it's definitely not on Steam or anything, and it's not... I don't think it's even easy to run, even if you have a legal copy, so... You know, it'll definitely be great to have that re-released, and, you know... It's amazing that it survived LucasArts. Um, that's really cool of Disney to allow that to happen. Like, because... I was kind of worried we'd never get what we got at Sony's Perfect Conference, so that that was the Megaton for me. They, um... Oops, did I use Flash? Whatever. Um, yeah, that was really cool. Uh, I'll definitely be picking that up. I never, I got, I didn't get the original. I watched a Let's Play sort of in and out. Um, but I'll definitely want to play it myself when it comes out for PS4. Um, it sounds like it might come out to... They said other... Talk about other platforms later, so it'll probably eventually come to PC or something. But, uh... Hell, personally, I kind of want to reward Sony for actually picking that up, because that's really cool. And I doubt it would come back without their funding. Um, so that was really cool. What else did they have? Um, a, oh, PlayStation Vita TV, which they rebranded to PS TV. You know, PlayStation TV still plays some Vita games and stuff. They announced that, which I'm really excited for that. Um, to be quite honest, I love the Vita and everything, but dropping the Vita name is probably for the best, unfortunately. Um, but that looks pretty good. Um, but right around that time, they had 
they had these like 20 minutes where they were talking about um i think it was the playstation vita tv started off and then they announced some numbers like how many times people press the share button and stuff and um i don't mind a little bit of number gloating but i mean none of it was very interesting and then they ended up with this powers tv show thing and they're talking about exclusive tv like you know it was almost like the xbox one reveal with this guy, you know, Dr. Robotnik came up on stage and was telling us about this comic book show and it should not have been at E3. Not on a main frickin' press conference for one of the console makers, at least. Um, I think people exaggerated how, you know, how much it harmed their press conference, but it really did kill the pacing for a bit there. They brought it back a little bit. Um, they showed, I think Uncharted 4 was after that. Uncharted 4 looking absolutely beautiful. And I guess they're targeting 60 frames per second. Like the show, they showed, um, you'll have to view the trailer itself. But, um, they, the trailer they showed was running on a single PS3 in, or PS4 in real time. You know, not pre rendered. So that's, that's 60 frames per second. So hopefully they can keep that frame rate. And I think they're targeting 60 frames per second for The Last of Us Remastered. I, I hope they manage to get that. That'll be really cool if so. <laughs> it kind of blows everything else out of the water. Like, The Order um, still looks very pretty, of course. Though, hopefully they're reworking gameplay, or they haven't shown us the relevant gameplay. They haven't shown The Order very well. It looks very pretty, but we don't have much to go off other than that. Um... But I'm definitely excited for Little Big Planet. I'm excited for all the weird artsy crap that I'm sure lots of people aren't. Um, they had a good third party showing too, like the Batman, whatever, is it the Arkham Knight? Um, whatever Batman they showed. Um, that actually looked pretty good. I've never been too much into that series, but they did a good shine. Um, I think Sony could have done a better job. Like the thing that annoyed me about Sony's press conference is that in addition to the stupid TV thing that I don't think most people watching cared about, um, and the dead air of, you know, blah blah blah, here's some numbers, um, it's not like they did that because they didn't have games. Because there were other games and stuff like, they had, um, what's it called? Counter Spy looks really cool. And they have a whole bunch of other stuff like that. Like, they had they had a live stream where they showed a bunch of other games, um, sometimes with gameplay. A lot like Nintendo's Treehouse thing, where they had, you know, streams all the time. But they didn't advertise that very well. And they had a lot of games they didn't show. And they had, um, they had gameplay footage from Bloodborne, the, um, you know, from From Software. They had gameplay footage. It was obviously a bit rough, um because, you know, it's still in development, whatever. But it looked way better than the stupid pre-rendered cinematic trailer they showed. They had better stuff than what they showed, and that's not what you should be doing. Um, and they had they had new clips for uh, Everybody's Gone to the Rapture. Um, Rhyme was absent, but I guess that's a Gamescom thing, we're thinking. Um, I'll definitely be interested to see more of Rhyme. That looks very good. Um, see, I... I think Sony, I'm not sure I would say they would have won, like, I'm not sure it would be enough to unequivocally win E3, but they definitely could have done a lot better than they did with the material they did have. So it's not like they didn't have the games, they just didn't present themselves very well. And I actually really like the, um, the Ratchet & Clank thing, the Ratchet & Clank movie, is looking pretty good. And I don't mind the HD remake for PS4. I'll play that. I got the uh, HD versions for PS3. Um, those games have aged, man. Though, um, the PS2 Arts and Glank games looked pretty rough. So I'll be glad to play the first one in, you know, proper remastered instead of just, you know, higher resolution. Um, but the movie looked good, and it, the movie is related to video games, you know? People that like video games like Ratchet and Clank. You know, it's not some stupid TV show about superheroes. That, that was bad. Anyway, on to Nintendo. Um, Nintendo had my favorite style of it. Like, I not... 
I don't think it's necessarily that it was all live that made the difference, but what Nintendo did was basically come out and they had a cute little skit of Iwata and Reggie fighting, you know, for Smash Bros. Um, and it was pretty funny. And they had some robot chicken stuff that I wasn't as much of a fan of. Um, I guess if you're a really big robot chicken fan, it'd be cool, but I don't know. It was sort of weird. Um, but then they showed actual, I forget what they showed first, but they had, um, they had a couple of new IPs. They had, um, Splatoon, which seems to have really stolen the show. It's like a third person shooter, um, four versus four team thing where you splatter paint around. And, you know, if you get half the stage is covered in your color paint, you win. And the way you move and stuff in the game, like you swim through ink that you spread on the ground and the characters are like these ink people. Um, they did a really good job of presenting that and it looks really cool and really fresh. Though somebody found this 360 game that looks suspiciously like it, but whatever. Um, so that sort of gives me hope for Nintendo's new IP strategy because I mean, um, earlier this year or last year they had Rusty's Real Deal Baseball. Um, that's one that are free free to play things. I'm not a fan of anything that game is doing. Um, the visual design is gross, like literally gross, like rusty. That that dude's been to prison. I'm sorry. Um, I don't like the weird nag where paying money to buy the mini games affects the in-game story. That really squeaks me out. Um, I don't particularly like sports games, so I'm not would really be interested even if I liked all the other stuff but um, Splatoon looks really good good design all the way through um, they also had codename Steam um, which is an alright visual style but has weird character designs does not come across well on the 3DS screen not that anything does um, it has an awful name um, reaction has been very negative to the art style. I don't mind the art style, I don't like how it looks on the 3DS. I keep bumping the stupid gamepads bumpers. Um, what was I going to say? But yeah, they showed some new IPs, they look pretty good. I was glad to see that. But they also showed lots of games from, you know, established franchises that we were hoping for. Um, you should have seen me on Twitter, I was freaking out when they announced Kirby. Because I was telling myself, they're not going to announce Kirby, they just released a new Kirby game for 3DS. A few months ago, I was not expecting a Wii U Kirby game, and boom, Kirby's Canvas Curse sequel on Wii U. I will be getting that day one. If you haven't played Kirby's Canvas Curse and you have a DS, you are doing yourself a great disservice. That's easily the best game that made use of the, D D the DS's stylus. Um, it completely vindicated the dual, well, not so much the dual screen, but definitely the stylus. Um, amazing game. I compl completed it 100%. Loved every minute of it. Um, and it's got a claymation art style. I was very glad to see lots of colorful and unique art styles at Nintendo's thing. I've been a little worried at Nintendo's transition to, you know, Super 3D all the time. New Super Mario Bros. Really gross, clean, boring visual design that I don't like. Um, Yoshi's New Island, which is an awful, awful game and you shouldn't buy. Um, Kirby Triple Deluxe was a lot better visually like it looks like they managed to somehow port um kirby's return to dreamland to the 3ds with almost no loss of quality it that's one of my favorite looking games on the uh 3ds really um and yoshi's woolly world looks really good um that's yarn yoshi they changed the 2D um, string style from, you know, Kirby's Epic Yarn. They changed that up to, you know, a more 3D, like, it looks like Sackboy, basically. Um, it looks a lot like Little Big Planet. Um, it's not a negative thing. Um, and it plays like Yoshi, like Yoshi's Island. Um, and it seems like it might be a worthy successor to Yoshi's Island, finally which we have not had, ever. Possibly Yoshi's Story was the second best, but that's, it's a really far fall from the original Yoshi's Island. 
Um, the music, I was not a fan of the music they showed, but I mean, um, it was better than Yoshi's New Island, at least. Uh, hopefully, you know, it's not entirely representative of the game itself. But the main thing about Nintendo, um, for one thing, they had all of these games we didn't know about before. So they definitely had the most surprises. And they showed the most gameplay. That's what really made it the best for me. And I think a lot of people agreed. Um, it's just... You know, we actually got to see actual games, and then they had the Nintendo Treehouse, which is like, you know, they had people actually playing the games. Not, you know, pre-recorded footage, but they had actual working demos of the games. And, you know, just these random people, like... They were hired, but they were not, you know, developers or anything. They made that quite clear. Um, but it was really cool to see, you know, real people playing real games. Um, and I really would like to see a lot more of that at E3 because there was way too much CGI in general. I... This is not Final Fantasy VII. You, you know, games look good now. You can just show footage of your game looking good and doing stuff. You don't need to pull the Final Fantasy VII marketing trick of never showing your actual game because it looks awful. Um, at least the 3D parts of it. Um, so, I, I don't know what the hell is up with that because a lot of games, like, they didn't show gameplay of FIFA. They have that every year. You know there is a working, high-fidelity prototype of FIFA right now, and they couldn't show that? I mean... I don't get why there's all the bullshit. And I hope there- Nintendo definitely had the most, the most positive reaction, at least on Twitter and, you know, among journalists that I saw. Um, so I really hope the other, you know, the big three at least, or, you know, maybe even all the third parties, hopefully, will, um, sort of emulate that and make it a point to show a lot more actual gameplay from real games you can play. Like, it doesn't have to be done, but good lord, show us the game, not stupid CGI crap. And we're... I just really don't understand why marketing is this weird priority where like especially since cutscenes in game can look good enough um especially if you saw that uncharted and the order um 1886 gameplay stuff or even infamous second son in engine cutscenes look good enough why not show just actual stuff from the game the phantom pain that looked great and that's even a cross gen game and it kind of looks it doesn't look bad but i mean it looks cross-gen at 1080p 60fps instead, which is good. Um, I just want to see more actual games at E3, not, you know, incredibly expensive prototypes that aren't going to look anything like the real game. That's dumb. So yeah, I hesitate to say Nintendo won E3 because, I mean, what does that mean exactly? Like, I'm not sure Nintendo is going to sell the most after E3, and isn't that what they're all really there for? Um, so, I mean, in terms of sales, I don't think PlayStation 4 is going to drop down any. Um, I think Xbox One is going to pick up a little bit, but I'm not sure, because there were some really good sales last, um, you know, last month and after Titanfall. Um, they've had some really good sales, and in my opinion, um, a $450 package with a Kinect and I think they had a few months of live, and Titanfall um, is a much better deal than just, you know, $400 Xbox One, no connect, no games. It's not really amazing. Um, but who knows. Um, so I don't see, I don't see the positions changing too much, but I do see, um, Xbox picking up a bit. They've done a really good job at salvaging everything they destroyed in 2013. In fact, that's if you watch their um, their press conference, they made it you know subtle at first, but they definitely soft relaunched the Xbox One. 
And I thought that was interesting. They never showed the connect. Like, they had... Um, poor Harmonix was on stage. They were the only people with a Kinect game. They were the only people talking about Kinect in the entire conference. I felt bad for them. Um, I'm sure... <laughs> Well, I'm not sure about Fantasia. I think their stuff's gonna sell all right because it's early on, and I mean, most people that have an Xbox One currently do have the Kinect. Um, but I don't think there's much of a future in the Kinect stuff. Like, I don't know. They just really have not justified that well. I'm not sure it can be justified, honestly. Um, we've had, it's been, what, 2010 since Kinect launched? It sold millions of units. Um, if this were something that we could make work, I just have to imagine it would have worked out. It's just kind of not. Excuse me, sir. Um, so yeah. I'm not so sure about Connect, but they seem to have dropped it. And they're sort of, you know, refocusing on dedicated servers, on multiplayer, and, you know, the stuff the 360 did well. That's obviously what they want to focus on, and that's really what they should be focusing on. They're sort of being quiet on the power gap, and I mean, they can't really say too much about that without, you know, just admitting, yeah, we have the weaker console, but at least it's the same price now. Um, Wii U, I really hope the Wii U sales pick up after that, because that, like... In an hour, I saw more cool stuff on Wii U than I've seen in the last two years, to be quite honest. I love Pikmin 3, I love Super Mario 3D World, um, Tropical Freeze is great, Mario Kart 8 is Mario Kart 8, I guess. Um, but yeah, they showed a lot of really cool stuff, they showed they're not gonna just abandon the Wii U. Um, not too much 3DS stuff, but I prefer gaming on my TV anyway. So that's why I'm really glad to see the PS Vita TV. I already got that pre-ordered. That's my only pre-order from E3 so far. Um, though I might get um, the First Light DLC for uh, Second Sun. I'm probably going to get a lot from this E3 to be quite honest, but I'm not too big on pre-orders. Um, yeah, Wii U looks a lot better. I really hope it translates to sales. I'm not sure it's going to. I really hope Nintendo doesn't make this huge mistake you know again with the next consoles I really hope we see you know a modestly powerful console I hope we see you know what I really want to see is real accounts on Wii U and a real effort on the virtual console they have not done well for the virtual console at all um, it should at least have parity with okay I understand licensing is probably part of the reason that, you know, the Wii, all the Wii Virtual Console isn't on Wii U, but the fact that all of the Nintendo-owned, exclusively owned games aren't on Wii U is really sad. Um, even not counting N64 since they haven't done any yet, but like, that all the NES and SNES ones aren't ported over yet, that's really lame. That I have to rebuy all that crap? is really lame. It's like a dollar for the SNES or the NES ones, a dollar fifty for the SNES ones. To convert all of my virtual console games for my Wii, um, it would probably take like a hundred bucks. And to me, that's bullshit because I already bought the license to the game. Um, and the emulator, you know, people say, oh they upgraded the emulator, so you have to pay for that. Well what you really do is they upgrade the emulator once, and you know, they seem to have customized wrappers, allegedly, but I'm not sure how much work that would have really been. But generally speaking, um, the PlayStation 1 classics on PSN for, you know, PSP, PS3, PS Vita, that's how a virtual console really should work. And it's a real damn shame, because if Nintendo had feature parity with the PlayStation stuff, um, they could probably pretty easily show off a better library. Like, the PlayStation 1 had really great... Why can't I get past this guy? Um, the PlayStation 1 had one of the best libraries of all time, but, at least for its time, you know, a lot of that stuff hasn't aged super well. 
But Nintendo has all these pixel art games like Earthbound here that have aged well, in my opinion. You know, some people don't appreciate, but whatever. Um, and they have, you know, so many systems, and they have exclusive rights to a lot of the best stuff on that stuff. Unlike poor Sony that has to go through Activision to get Crash or Spyro. Um, so they're really squandering what could be an amazing value add to a struggling console, and I'm... that's just ridiculous. But that's not really an E3 thing. I just was kind of hoping they would go out and say, Hey, the virtual console su stopped sucking while you were looking away, and hey, you have real accounts, and hey, cloud saves, but no. Not that that happened. But the games are coming, that's, that's what Nintendo's good for. So it was a good E3 all around. Um, I was not impressed by EA, but I was not expecting to be impressed by EA. They didn't have too much to show other than the annual sports games. They had a little bit of um, Mirror's Edge 2, that was cool. The um, Battlefield Hardline demo, or beta, I'm sure it was cool for some people. But uh, I wasn't too much of a fan of Ubisoft's either. Um, I like their Ubi art projects, I, I hope they keep doing that. that they That is their best stuff in my opinion. And I'm really glad to see a AAA developer dipping into, you know, 2D, you know, high quality 2D art again. Um, I'm completely lost in Earthbound, I'm afraid. Um, so yeah, I think it was a really good E3. I think no matter what console you have, or no matter what console you're looking at, it's definitely a brighter future. Um, Wii U is definitely looking up the most, like, biggest... I'm going to give the Wii U the most improved gold star. Um, I don't personally want an Xbox One, but if you got an Xbox One, it's, you know, I definitely think it is worth its asking price, assuming... My main problem with the Xbox One is multiplats aren't going to be the best on it, and um, since I already have a PC, and that's the whole problem. Me with Xbox, having a gaming PC and a PlayStation means it's really all up to Microsoft exclusives. And I... Halo went sour for me. Gears of War went sour for me. Well, I never really liked Gears of War. I'm not really into the dude bro stuff, so... I just don't have too much for me. But whatever. That's, you know, that's my opinion of E3. It was a good one. That is my opinion. Um, thanks for watching. I have no idea when I will do another one of these, but I just thought I would give, you know, a roundup of E3. Um, lots of cool stuff. I hope next year we see more gameplay because we're showing games. Like even if it's a cinematic game, show me what I'm going to see in the actual game, not, you know, CG trailers of crap that's not actually even used in the game as a cutscene. That's... No, just no.